Okay, so once we're confident that we're getting good quality data in, once we've covered the basic concepts of planning the data collection forms and the, the, the entry components, probably the next best thing to think about with, uh, with any electronic data capture system would be able to, to look at the viability of getting good quality data out. So in REDCap, we have uh, here a screen that shows really a couple of screens. The, 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 the one at the, uh, at, at the top there really kind of shows how an individual with rights to this particular module in REDCap would be able to sort of select uh, fields that are associated with individual forms or even individual field elements within forms to, to export. Once they click the export uh, piece, they, uh, they, they will be handed a data set that, uh, that, that really is formatted for use in any of the common statistics packages. The pink section that you're seeing there in the, uh, in, in the larger screen uh, shows, shows how we've embedded as well some de-identification tools that allow uh, date shifting to occur and identifier uh, information, that known identifiers to be obfuscated as we shift it. And some investigative teams uh, use that. Some, sometimes that's very crucial to a study. So sometimes they don't, but it's, it's there in case they need it. Uh, another thing that you'll see in the bottom screen there is once you've uh, generated those files, uh, you could either download them and use them on your uh, secure uh, s system for, for analysis now, or there are some secure mechanisms for transferring files among team members uh, using, uh, using really a data transfer capacity, or we call it send it in REDCap. And this allows you to uh, generate information, uh, send, send along files, either the ones that have been generated using the statistics uh, export that I just, just showed, or you know, maybe, maybe files that are uploaded just for the, just for the uh, purpose of transferring securely. It allows you basically to upload files and be able to send those uh, in a secure way to, to partners, whether they're in REDCap or not. Audit trails are very important, and um, while these are not terribly exciting to the research teams from, from the perspective of their day-to-day -day operations. They sometimes come in very, very handy if, if there's a need to go back and look at who did what to the data at, at any given time. And, and we know from other earlier modules and sections that this is extremely important uh, for, for good clinical practice and for HIPAA and for all sorts of reasons. Mainly it's a good idea because if you care enough about the data to collect it, you really should be keeping good solid audit trails of, of who's doing what to the data at any given time. There are some, uh, some logging features within REDCap that are not uh, e easily viewable by the end user that, that have more information even about who viewed what data at any given time. But, but for sure, we like uh, including a module in any study that, that research teams are using so that they have the, the ability to go back and, and review those audit trails in various ways. This is extremely valuable for submitting uh, studies to the Human Subjects Review Board or the IRB if you're in the U.S. Uh, it's important to put in uh, this, this sort of detail in grants and contracts so that really uh, the, the uh, teams reviewing those know that you're doing the right thing in terms of, of uh, treating data securely and, and in a fashion that's, uh, that's associated with good clinical practice. Another thing that's, that's important in any electronic data capture system is the notion of rights. Uh, in REDCap, any individual can be um, added to a study. After they've been added to a study, we see on the right there that um, they may be, uh, uh, that they, the project owner has access and can associate a particular user at the form level. Uh, they, have, they can have read, write, or no access to specific case report forms or survey instruments. Uh, and they also have the ability to dial up or down uh, the, the access to particular modules that, that, that get included with any REDCap study. This is really critical because we, we set it up, uh, we set up REDCap at least to be very, very autonomous. And uh, part of that is being able to put in the hands of research teams the ability to uh, create and, and review and iterate on their case report forms and get the data just right. 
We also want to make sure that we have the, uh, in the hands of those same project owners, the ability to add and remove users as needed without intervention from a programming team. So again, I, I keep speaking about REDCap here, but this is a function in, in uh, capacity that really should be, uh, should be considered when selecting any electronic data capture system. Uh, setup should be fairly intuitive and fairly easy. In uh, REDCap, we, uh, we, we have set things up so that there's a lot of point and click action that can be done by non-programmers. And uh, really there's, there's the option of instantiating a new project in about 30 seconds. We just ask for, for a very rudimentary uh, set of data about the particular study. Uh, they can start from scratch if you, as you've seen here uh, with the option in the middle to, to create everything myself. Or you know, individuals can uh, start from a template. That template might be a randomized clinical trial with, with randomization built in. Or you know, it might be a mouse colony project. So, so having the system be able to sort of quickly launch the uh, planning team or the research team in our case it is very critical and, and something that we've seen over and over again uh, helps because it really puts the power back in the hands of the researchers rather than uh, programmers. Again, uh, in, in the REDCap system, that, that instantiation of a project goes fairly quickly. There are tools, there are point and click tools that we'll see a little bit later that, uh, that allow uh, real time uh, case report form and survey creation uh, by the end users. In uh, some cases, there is a need to, uh, if we're doing a longitudinal study, maybe there might be a setup of, uh, of, of, uh, of study events that could then be used in a scheduling module when, when you're scheduling out patients. So, uh, you know, just, just easy point and click, uh, non-programmer use of the tools is, is again sort of one of those things that, that should, be, uh, should, should be a consideration for EDC projects. In REDCap, we're, we're not, uh, we love the point and click work if we're doing uh, small to medium sized studies, you know, 30, 40 questions. It gets a little bit cumbersome if you're doing 4,000 questions for, for a study over a longitudinal period of time. And so one of the ways that we've kind of, kind of uh, designed around that is the ability to have a data dictionary uh, that, that can be created that has all of the elements about the data that you're going to be collecting, which forms, uh, wh whether it's a select box or a type in box, et cetera. Have that all uh, uh, represented in a table-based program like Excel. And so that you can uh, import and export and be able to sort of manage the metadata or the data uh, coding at the file level rather than doing all of the point and click work. This is also very convenient for studies where you want to share with colleagues. I've got another group that's using REDCap at another institution. Hey, we'd love to be able to reuse some of the work that you're doing and not have to reinvent the wheel. And by the way, that really might help us to share data later on if we go that route. So it's very easy in this file-based methodology to transfer the data dictionary or the metadata for the study around from site to site and, and thereby get, get up to speed very, very quickly in, uh, in the new study. Um, we've mentioned in earlier sections that uh, one of the things that, that's very important is uh, in, in planning data collection and strategy is sort of the reuse of validated instruments whenever you can. We also showed in an earlier section a uh, library that, uh, that is available for, um, for, for use by, by REDCap users to make it easier than, than coding all of those validated instruments into the electronic data capture itself. Here's another shot of that library front screen. And uh, it, it goes through the, the validation considerations, the licensing agreements, et cetera. And if you are uh, coming from REDCap, uh, there is a function that will allow it to automatically shoot the, the metadata for this particular instrument into your study capture uh, protocol so, so that it's there just as if you had gone through either the point and click method of creating the case report form or survey or the file based method that we talked about in the last slide. So in any electronic data capture system, uh, one of the things that you want to look for is ease of use because you really want to reduce the training costs associated with your staff. And if you're doing multi-center studies, maybe a, as a coordinating center, you certainly want to reduce the staff, uh, staff training time at, at, at places that are remote from you. So what we do uh, in, in our system, again, we, we really uh, put a lot of stock in putting the power in the hands of the research teams 
that are conducting this studies, we try to, to be very liberal about including inline video documentation within the platform. We found uh, that, that people will typically watch a two-minute video where they will not take the time to download a, you know, a two-page Word document or a PDF document with, with a manual of instructions. So we've, we've found a lot of bang for the buck for including those and embedding those videos just in time, just at the point where you might be wondering, hey, here's something around what you're doing right now that, that should take 30 to 45 seconds to watch. People will watch those and there'll be less questions downstream. So um, we found uh, that in addition to being able to upload files at the person level, if we're doing a human study, in a case report form, maybe that use case would be, uh, while I'm looking at this individual's demographics, I have his signed consent form in a PDF, and so I want to upload that data and associate it with a particular case report form. That's all doable. We found as well that it's important to uh, think about study level files. And so in REDCap, we have a module called the Project File Repository where end users can upload uh, study documents, not necessarily associated with an individual person, but, but associated with the entire study, maybe a, an overall consent form. Uh, in, the, in the middle section there, we see data export files, and, and uh, that's where individuals can go in and find uh, sort of a static copy of data any time that it's been exported. We go ahead and park a version of that, uh, the sort of snapshot of that data uh, the ex in, in the form of export files in, in this repository as well. So it's very good for project-specific files. It's very good for uh, sort of frozen data sets. And, you know, we found that smart people use uh, generic tools in all kinds of ways, and you know, pe pe people tend to find a way to, uh, to, to leverage this for good use.